समर्पण 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 थैंक यू I'd like to hear more about the transformational process that occurs when the practice of surrender happens. Let, let's say uh, I'm in my ego and uh, say I'm uh, affected by what somebody says. What would the stages be of surrender that you're talking about? Like what happens after that if I apply? Firstly, what I would like to respond to is the statement, when I'm in my ego. Okay. In this practice, in this uh, sadhana, as you know, the I is taken as a slim identity and is accepted as the doer for the initial uh, stages of the sadhana, which is Miranda in your case, your mother's name, and the location you're from. So it would be Miranda, daughter of... Gail. Gail from... Uh, Toronto. Toronto. So Miranda, daughter of Gail from Toronto, is the doer in this case. She is not in ego. She is simply that thing that, that takes the decision for this system to move like this or like this or like that. So she's not an ego. What is happening is that ego, as a body of information and wantings, demandings, clamorings, hopings, yearnings, all of that big mess is standing in the way between her and her soul, which sends an impulse in every moment, a truth impulse to action. So Let's say something terrible happens and she becomes emotional. There are two ways of becoming emotional. One is where Miranda decides there is one part of my being which is emotional in nature and I want to experience that emotion in its depth and in its wideness and in its, in its uh, intensity. But it is a decision undertaken to enter into that emotion and experience it and explore it. Then there is the other way where it is not the decision of a Miranda to experience something, but it is the ego which shakes her, which comes with something so intense and so... Mm. And she, because she's not in surrender to the truth of her being in every moment is pushed from side to side like a, like a little paper boat on an ocean. Now the more she bends in surrender to her master, the more that process, that very important process takes place on a daily basis as a sadhana in every moment. That is the sadhana, eyes open, eyes open, look, see what's going on, be aware. This I, I'm giving myself a name, my mother's name, where I was born, for the moment, that's what I'm doing. I'm in, in, I'm in surrender to the soul, the master of the being. Is this action of mine that I want to undertake now impulsed by the truth or is it the ego pushing? Is it the ego pushing this action? That is the line of inquiry as a seeker in this sadhana, in this practice. The transformation that takes place is very interesting because the moment you are in that surrender state, nothing can buffet you around mm. because you're in a, you are in a solid connection with the master of your being holding your hand. So you can't fall down, mm. like a little child you're held in that moment. But if you let go and run, then 
the big bad wolf will come for you, mm -hmm. which is the ego. Mm -hmm. So the processes of bending, 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 samarpan, sharanagati, bend, 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 is what actually connects you more and more to the soul and strengthens that system increasingly to, one, discern when the ego is pushing an action, and two, to turn the back to the ego and turn inward. So that's the process. And what happens then, which is incredible, and many people who, are, who have taken up this practice will vouch for that in the sense that they'll actually speak about that experience, is that you start to feel an expansion of consciousness. For example, you start to receive information which is very precise. In fact, we were just discussing this last night where one of my students was once again speaking about the fact that he just starts getting information. And the tests that we have done are amazing because this information is true. Even, even information from the past of a person and things like that. So what happens is that this expansion of consciousness starts to open up your... It, oh, it's not even a siddhi actually, because that is not what is sought for in this practice. What is sought for is to live this life as it is meant to be lived, which is in a quiet, joyous state, not euphoric, not, you know, these huge bliss experiences and and love and everybody dancing around. It's just this very quiet, joyous state that keeps a smile on your face till the last breath in your body. That's it. It's not more than that. You know, it's, it's just being with your eyes open, feeling the other because you feel yourself, because you're here, you're not in a cosmic state, you're not blissing out, you're just present. It is a bit tough in the beginning, this life, but gradually, as, you, as the consciousness settles, as your awareness actually is here and now, and your perception is clear, and you're in surrender to the truth, that joyousness starts to emerge, and the consciousness starts to expand. A person who could barely write a single sentence with, without about a thousand mistakes in it, now writes beautiful, texts, because of the expansion that happens in the consciousness, it is not only the conceptual that becomes more precise, the, Im the experience of the emotional becomes more vibrant. That's what the transformation is. Mm. When you tune away from the pain, not into observing it as something which is not yours, but tuning into the master of the being, the soul. Because in most of the neo-Advaitin practices that are, that are given, what is missing is that very, very important word, surrender. And I mean, you can surrender to the Guru, but the idea is, the, the Guru is a reflection, the Guru is, is mirroring the soul, is saying, go there, go there, go there, that's your home, that's your master, that's your home. But if the surrender processes are interpreted as being in surrender to the Guru, and then uh, everybody hugs everybody, then I think we are on a wrong track. The, the process is... The surrender to the Guru is actually a training. It is not about the Guru. The Guru can be an absolute idiot, it doesn't matter. The surrender process is a training to surrender to your Master, which is the Antar Guru, the final destination the final destination, because many people, they feel nice and happy, they have a guru, they go touch the feet of the guru, they're all surrendered and they think, that's it, it's not it. It's only a training for that, and that's what results in the expansion of consciousness and surrender. And you may have noticed, Miranda, that if you've been practicing the sadhana, that the movements of Kundalini have quietened down, right? So when we do yatras, we have, for those who actually take up that seva of coming on the yatras, we also have the evening satsangs. And yesterday, something incredible happened. Just one of the students, he 
like you as an disturbed Kundalini, not awakened but disturbed. And so what had happened, I had in the past many years whenever people came with disturbed Kundalini's pain in the system and so on, I was able to quiet it down just with this hand, with the, with the right hand. So we were sitting there and then I said something to him and I did my hand raised like this and he suddenly felt the movement up. And then he said, yeah, you know, Ma is moving now, the Shakti is moving. And I was just, ah, I don't believe it. Then I said, okay. Then I put my hand down and he said, now it's going down. And then it, I, I, I said, let me test it on others <laughs> because I'm always very curious about... And then I went to one or two others they, because they don't have a disturbed Kundalini and then there was one more student and he said, yes Maya, it's moving. And then it was moving, it was coming down and up and down. So this is, a, this is because the Shakti has been disturbed, you know, by the practices. And as you do this practice, it'll quiet down, quiet down and then she will do what she is there for, which is to send you energy throughout a lifetime, whenever there is, whenever the ego has won a situation, then the Shakti will send a thing to, to protect the system. Very interesting yesterday, it was a bit... Whew. Thank so you. that's how the transformation will happen. Mm -hmm. also, also Ma will quiet down, the system will become more coherent. I already see your entire system much more coherent than it was the first day because you were swaying much more. There was sway and there was... there was... yeah, there was less coherence than there is today. It's more solid, it's more present. Very important for self-realization. Okay, thank you. In Indian society, in the past many you know, hundreds if not thousands of years, anyone where the Kundalini was disturbed was actually given a lot of respect and kept quiet and, you know, it was not because the... they were revered for what had happened to them, but it was to quiet Ma down, you know, to protect the person from that Shakti taking off in any direction. It has been misinterpreted totally, like there is no understanding or practically no understanding of what actually Kundalini Shakti is. So people are trying to awaken and do and this and that, she is awake already. She is awake, very much so. You, you feel that also, right? I'll take you after him, you, you, you can come then you after him. Namaskar. Namaskar.